Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Russia. So we are in this war with France, which has already started to go our way, but on top of that, we should be blockading them really soon, and I think that will bring things to an early close. We've already had a few messages about France starting to teeter under the pressure, and uh, there it is, some more of those going on. Uh, they've had some reasonable success with their submarines, but it looks like we're finally starting to close that off. And the Tomislav is intercepted by a French ship. Okay, well, again, we will fight this. This is in the Caribbean. <laughs> Reminds me of my Confederate States of America playthrough. Anyway, let's get things set up. I'm sure this is going to be a simple disengagement. So let's do all this stuff. We don't even need torpedoes because the Tomislav doesn't have any. Okay, so we have the wind in our favor. Squad max. And we will try to use Puerto Rico as a good cover. Because I think that's the fastest thing we can get to. And it'll also keep the wind in our favor. Although this little leg out here is better if we want to try to wedge somebody into the edge. Let's just see how, like, what direction they're going, how they react. Yeah, it looks like this is the best deal for us. I'm not going to even waste time with the engagement. Um, we'll just let them go their own way. You can go your own way. And I will go mine. Okay, so this uh, should be over pretty quick. We might as well just go back to cruise and turn that way for fun. Oh yeah, well, this is going to take a long time unless I get the game, the time compression up, huh? So how is everything going in the world? Good. This is pretty cool, the way they really are using, they're trying to use at least. Do they have, eh, is that an accurate model? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so they also have a light cruiser. Let's find out which one it was. Interesting. This is a ship we may have been able to defeat. We would not have had an option to disengage, though. But probably we could have beaten it. I mean, I do trust our ships. Let's also take a look at the Tomislav. Let's see how our raiders are doing. They're in good condition. Yeah, I think we could have taken that battle. Yeah, we have a few people missing in the Mediterranean. Looks like Topaz will probably be interned because we don't have a port there. Um, I would like to see our older, well, our newest, our only set of Dreadnoughts get into some action here. But... Maybe that's just not possible. All right, improved gyroscope. I think that's fire control related. Nope, it is torpedo related. We'll take it all. All right, one of our vessels. I don't know what class that is. See, the French are doing really well with their submarines. Wow. So the old Modesta Mingle has survived a, an encounter with a mine, but will be out for five months, which is the longest I've ever seen. The longest I've ever seen a ship being out for is five months. Good, Savo. Very good. Sinking those French merchant ships. <laughs> yeah, very successful. This is strange how it kind of ebbs and flows our success in merchant ship rating. Wow, we're still going. Goodness. Three more. Holy cow. That was so many. Enemy raid on shipping, I'm going to decline. And we cannot decline this one, so we will fight it. Naturally enough. Let's go forward and then start getting these things. Don't need that. Okay, what? Well, you must be a flora class. You are. So we'll kind of look out for the ship type we're up against. Because five six-inch guns is probably good enough compared to only two six-inch guns and a bunch of four-inch guns. Now, four-inch guns still do damage, but, oh, we chose the wrong direction. Let's go north. 
Can we shake them? I, I don't think so. Are they persistent here? Do they? Oh, it's a. We really don't like this. The look of that. Okay. Oh well, if it's a pro day class, I think we're not in good shape. Uh, there's no place to run either. Um, okay. Well, let's just hope that they don't engage. They are engaging. Well, let's run right at them. This is a little strange, but if we can cause them to turn, I was thinking. Oh. Well, if we can get over to this island, maybe we can lose them. <laughs> That's the best hope I have. We are actually landing a lot of hits. Well, look at this. What do you know? When I see an elephant fly. That's how I feel right now. I mean, I guess we have the same broadside as them. Even though they've already destroyed one of our turrets. I'm not going to deviate. I mean, why, how would we deviate? We're just landing so many hits. Even if this ends up being our end due to a torpedo. Okay, now we deviate very clearly. And if they want to call that a day, I am willing to, to do that. Whoa. Jeez, man. They, they, <laughs> they destroyed another turret. Those bastards. Run away. I would like to give um, engage them with my starboard side because obviously our port side is pretty beat up. Wait, nope. We're beat up on both sides. Never mind. But it looks like we're going to be able to get away from this one as well. We might even call that a victory. We'll see kind of what kind of damage we did to them. Very good. Oh, it's a marginal victory for the Russians. Very good. And that is marginal. Still, against a, you know, I would say a superior French cruiser, I mean light cruiser, that's pretty good. 60 whole victory points. But look at this. Where was this? This hasn't been happening, and then suddenly just boom. We get an explosion. Look at this. Six merchant ships in the Mediterranean by Diana. Jeez, a killing. Okay, well, uh, very good job. They uh, they probably should fix this. Three victory points. I mean, this is three sailors you pick up in the water. It does not matter. <laughs> hmm. I think we can secure better terms. Even though we're not blockading them, I feel like that's the same thing right now. Um, I'm surprised that we're not blockading them. Oh, okay, so that's it. And we have six points. Well, ugh, jeez. Didn't we take things in West Africa? I, I wish I had been prepared for this. I am completely not prepared. But West, West Africa seems easier to defend than anything in Asia, so... Or the Mediterranean, which one's easy? Which one is easier? Mediterranean is unfortunately the home water of France and Italy. We don't have Italy in here, though. We do have Austria-Hungary. I kind of don't want to give up. I don't want to put myself into close proximity of other people's home ports. I mean, we already share enough home ports: Germany, England, France, even Japan. So let me try to grab, this is unfortunately all east coast. All right, I think, man, middle Congo, is that the, like, is this, <laughs> let me go ahead and pull up on the other screen here. I'm not too ashamed to say, I don't know where some of these things are in um, Africa, but I think, I'm guessing these are, I don't know if Middle Congo is okay. Senegal is on the west coast. Yes. Of Africa. Middle Congo, I don't know. I really don't. And it it is also. Okay, good. So I I 
I can pretend, if nobody was listening, that I knew these were both in West Africa. Are any of these other ones? Djibouti? No. Madagascar? Obviously not. No. No, no, no. So Mediterranean. Maybe they're broken down by province. Because these are all Southeast Asia. Okay, yeah, so these are the only two we can take. We could take one more, but I don't see the point. Unless any of these... I don't think France owns anything in Northeast Asia. If I'm not mistaken, it's Britain, Germany... And of course, Japan. So let's just take these two and see what ended up happening with all that. Okay, so we were correct not to want, yeah, we got exactly what we should have. And it was true that we had already taken, I guess, which one of these? Yeah, we had already taken Angola. So we needed to put troops here anyway. Base capacity of 6. I probably want to expand the base capacity here. 20 and 40. So let's improve this base. Oh man, that's a bit expensive, so never mind. Pull back. <laughs> Let me. We probably will need to send some more troops there though. It says we're okay. Let's not assume that's true. Let's go ahead and put some units down there. <laughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Yeah, probably let's just take the ones in the Caribbean and the Mediterranean and send these over to West Africa. And next turn, we'll be able to see how many we can actually support there. Everyone else, okay, this is just, you guys move back to Northern Europe. Whoops, Northern Europe. And you guys move back to Northeast Asia. The one nice thing, uh, the really nice thing about this game is it does put all your ships back to active fleet the moment war ends. All those raiders have been automatically put back, you know, where we want them to active fleet. Okay, we have one more in the Caribbean. Come back home, and looks like two already in West Africa. That's fine. Good. So everyone should be going where they need. Now, the next step for us is a dreadnought, but as we can see, we're not really in a good position to build one of those quite yet. Okay, the light cruiser's getting better, but we don't need a new ship from them, at least anytime soon. It's not the priority, at least. We could always use a new light cruiser. Those are my, probably my favorite class to design. Um, I mean, my favorite class to design is actually the Dreadnoughts or the Battlecruisers. Take your pick, really. It's about... It, they're both fun. But my favorite to design in the game is probably the Light Cruisers. I mean, when you're in a career, in a campaign, just because you usually don't have the money to build a Dreadnought, you have to wait so long to actually get the money. So it's usually you're able to build some fun Light Cruiser designs several times during a, a career. But you might only have a chance to build two... Dreadnought designs. Looks like we can only go one more month on this budget. And there it is. What do we have to stop? Uh, well, it's going to have to be a battle cruiser. We'll halt them. We will halt the Molotov too. I think there's another halt Molotov already, so. Oh, that wasn't enough, huh? Okay, then McStadman, you'll have to hold off. And now that should be fine. Yeah, let's buy this even though we're going broke. And now we have to... Uh, is it, we only have one more month. Okay, it's fine. We can wait. Let's put a halt to you. There it is, the Brocklo right on cue, commissioned. Yeah, we'll sell diesel generators, sure. <laughs> okay, so let's unhalt this now, very good. Continue to push on. Yeah, let's re let's always pick up technology. We are not going to be able to develop these things for ourselves. Our, 
Our research is pretty slow. Although I say that, but all or nothing armor came so quickly. Okay, so we have not enough to unpause another one quite yet. Oh man, this is just like the uh, <laughs> the saga of Russian ships. They don't ever reach their design speeds. And I don't think that's even too historically inaccurate. But I actually don't know. Um, but it seems like Russian ships were often designed over tonnage. So, oh boy. That's, it's okay because it's just going to take a very simple retrofit to get us back up to 33, but always better if you don't have to retrofit uh, retrofit your ship the moment it comes out. So let's get the Molotov 2 back. And probably we can also now, okay, we'll take, okay, this is, uh, this is a time where I'm going to say no. We actually don't need cross deck fire because this is actually a step backwards. We, are can, we can already have four center line turrets. So there is no reason for us to have non center line turrets. That is very, very rare that I'll actually decline a technology. <laughs> but it, that was just the, the coming together of everything as a big sign that you shouldn't do it. Okay, so now our monthly balance should be starting to pick up again. Once these guys finish, it'll be even higher. So just another half year, and then we'll be ready for our Dreadnought. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll take better fire control. That's good. Huh. <sighs> And you know what, these Dreadnoughts, I keep looking at them and I'm just not that happy with them. I mean, we've kept our battleships, which have been useful for force projection, but have we have we invaded a colony yet? No. Hmm. Maybe it's time to... Hmm. You know what I think? I think it's going to be time to remove these heavy cruisers. Yes. So all the current heavy cruisers... You guys will go into the new Dreadnought pool, but we got to save as much money as quickly as possible. If I'm going to scrap these guys during this pre-war phase, um, whatever the next war is that is coming, it's a long way off. So it's better for me to scrap them now and save, you know, the one million per month by just saving those maintenance fees right away. So we're going to do it. It was great. They were... I mean, they are actually relatively cheap. What I'm thinking immediately when I see this is, hey, you know what, this is actually, these are better Raider ships than the Flora class. They're barely more expensive, only 50% more, but way better. Significantly better. I mean, obviously, this ship could take on two or three Flora classes. Ah, uh, that is an interesting point. But yet they go really underutilized because they don't get into engagements the same way as your light cruisers do. They often find themselves up against other heavy cruisers, very rarely up against um, light cruisers. Man, well, I'm going to think about that one off camera. I'm going to just, maybe I'll read the comments if somebody has a strong opinion one way or another. But, yeah, I I don't know. I certainly, I think it's going to be time to scrap some of these old ships soon. It's probably time to upgrade our Vesnik. Everyone is just selling us everything. Superimposed turrets on destroyers? Well, that's another thing we don't need because we already reached endgame for destroyers. So I'm also going to say no to that. This is going to save us just a little extra money that we can choose to use on the next Dreadnought or Battlecruiser. Very good. Hey, what do you know? <laughs> 
Didn't matter, did it? Wow, a lot of things. All right, and even more technology. Just technology is being tossed around. Ex enhanced high explosive filler. That sounds like AP or probably high explosive. Did I? Damn it, anyhow, did I choose the wrong option? Uh, too busy talking, not paying attention to the option. I mean, usually the bottom option is the one that selects it, right? Why did I do that? I'm going to go back. I'm going to enjoy going back and reading that one. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Okay, perfect timing. I mean, if you want to know perfect timing, if you're just about ready to build a new ship, and then suddenly 15-inch quality zero guns appear. I think we had them, but it was quality negative one. Then it becomes the obvious choice. And, you know, we I often get into building these big 16, 17, 18-inch guns on our final dreadnoughts, but... 15 inch guns are huge. A lot of ships in World War II, a lot of the main ships in World War II didn't have 15 inch guns. I'm sure that their 15 inch guns were better, but I mean, 15 inch guns is massive. I think there's very few ships who had over 15 inch guns, very few. I can only think of a few American ba um, battleships off the top of my head. Oh, maybe some Japanese ones as well, but. So 15 inches, we shouldn't be like, oh man, it's a, it's a shockingly low value. We need much bigger shells than that. Huh, Germany, that's interesting. Um, budget, prestige, well, we've already taken a lot of prestige hits. I'm going to do that. I think that that's the best. Let me think for a second. What does Germany offer us? I think Prussia is, yeah, impossible to get. The only thing that Germany can offer us is Kiaoshao Bay. Pretty low value. Hmm. I mean, that was that. That'd be a nice area to take a another colony in. Oh, you know what? They also offer us West Africa stuff. Okay, you know what? I'm completely on board with ruffling Germany's feathers. Usually the end game is, right, United States or Great Britain. Well, that would be a good appetizer trying to take on Germany. Doesn't seem like it's entirely out of the historical realm either to be going to war with Germany. 1919, a little bit late. I mean, about the time hostilities should be concluding. A little bit earlier if you're Russia and your whole nation goes into uh, a big civil war, but let's see. They want to buy this? By all means. I probably said by all means to Great Britain buying something for us that one time instead of us buying something from them. So there's the triple bottom. Uh, it kind of makes sense actually that the these advancements like triple bottom should only take effect on ships bef before if you design them after you have the technology the same way it happens with like um, armor saving but I'm not sure that's how it goes I really don't know I think um, fire control stuff might happen gradually over time which may not make sense but okay improved director firing now we're really in business Our funds are up, our monthly balance is high. I think this is about, there's no time like the present for building our dreadnought. So in order to kind of tease on for the next video, plus I'm, I'm sorry to say, I, I, I'm, my voice, hopefully it wasn't too bad, but I'm a little under the weather right now. Um, I'll just go ahead and design the dreadnought in the next video. <laughs> so thanks for watching this one. We'll cut it a little bit short and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next.